The market sell-off accelerated on the news. The White House cancelled a trade meeting with China this week. Uh, in a first on CNBC interview, we're joined by National Economic Council Director Larry Kudlow. Larry, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Wilfred. Appreciate it. Uh, so let's start uh, with that market-moving story, Larry. Our own colleague, Kayla Tausche, reporting a couple of hours ago that the U.S. Uh, cancelled an offer from the Chinese to meet with two of their uh, trade party uh, because there's not been enough progress. Is that true? And, and what was the factor behind the cancellation of the meeting? With respect, the story is not true. Right at the top, Wilfred, the story is not true. So there was never meeting. a planned meeting that was cancelled, or, or there was uh, that is there just wasn't a cancellation, was and there's still a meeting going to take place. Look, the big meeting that everyone's you know moving towards will be uh, Vice Premier Liu Hayes coming at the end of the month, as I think everybody knows. That will be a very important meeting. That'll be a principals meeting, and everyone was looking towards that. There were no other intermediate meetings scheduled. Look. We are in constant communication with the uh, Chinese uh, officials, okay, as part of our negotiations. I don't know where people got this idea. I'm here to deny it. Uh, this, you know, let's have a little more reporting, fewer novels, please. Okay, the story is unchanged. We are moving towards negotiations. These will be, as I've said before, the broadest and deepest scope of negotiations with China in, in history. OK. And President Trump, as you know, has pressed the case hard. All right. We've got unfair trading practices. We've got IP theft issues. Uh, we've got uh, structural technology issues, uh, ownership issues, as well as tariff and non-tariff barrier type issues. President Trump has pressed this case and is working with President Xi. Uh, there is good chemistry between them. I saw it in Argentina and so forth and so on. The meetings held in Beijing at the deputies level uh, covered all the ground, absolutely all the ground. And as I said also, Vice Premier Liu He is coming here with his top deputies and we will engage. That's the story. So, There's no cancellations. None. Zero. Let me just try to put that to rest. OK. Larry, well, listen, we hear that loud and clear. The, the issue of uh, IP, you mentioned it yourself, uh, and forced technology transfer, it's often seen as the most tricky issue and difficult issue uh, to, to get sorted. Has there been much progress there, or is that still a long way off? Well, look, um, there is a fulsome discussion, Wilfred. That's the key point. Put on the table, as I said, the scope of these things is deeper and broader than anything we've ever had before. So the discussion is there. The discussion points are there. I acknowledge the degree of difficulty, but it is a crucial point for the United States side. Look, President Trump has said he's been rather optimistic about the China trade talks, but they have to be in America's interests. And in order to achieve that goal, we have got to deal with these vexing problems uh, of IP theft and uh, the forced transfer of technology, the lack of American ownership of its own companies uh, in China, uh, cyber interference uh, with various corporations, along with various tariff and non-tariff barriers. So we are looking at this in great detail, Wilford. And as I said, this is the, you know, the deepest we've ever gone. I'm not here to predict. Uh, that's up to President Trump and send what, you know, what he can accept and what he cannot accept. I'm just saying it's all on the table and we will see how it comes out particularly um, the meetings at the end of the month, uh, which I think are going to be very, very important myself. I think that's going to be determinative of the future and what progress we make. Larry, this is Morgan. Investors are certainly me, listening to what you have to say right now. Me, We've got the Dow pairing. Morgan, law. Mo yep. Go ahead. Morgan, let me, I, I, I don't mean to, um, there's a little bit of a lag here. I, I want to add one more very important point regarding these talks. Enforcement is absolutely crucial to the success of these talks, enforcement. Uh, Ambassador Bob Lighthizer, our lead trade negotiator, also Secretary of Treasury Steve Mnuchin have said this a million times, I've said it, enforcement. Promises are great, but enforcement is what we want. Things like deadlines and timetables and full coverage of the various uh, structural issues we've just discussed. So please put that 
in your quiver of issues. Enforcement is going to be vital. Mm -hmm. Will this all be solved at the end of the month? I don't know. I wouldn't dare predict. But I just want to make sure people understand how important that is to put it on the table. I'm glad you brought up enforcement, Larry, because that has been such a key issue, not just for this administration in your talks with China, but in previous administrations as well that have tried to handle some of these issues and, and have really arguably failed. How do you enforce? What is the methodology and how would you like to see that played out in a trade deal? Well, I'm not going to get into details. Um, you know, these are very complex issues. They're also historical issues, um, as you suggest. So let me stay away from the details. But, you know, I'm an ex-Ronald Reagan guy. I was here in the Reagan administration many, many years ago. He coined a phrase, trust but verify. I'm sure you've heard of it. That's going to apply in the China trade talks. And I'll leave it up to Mr. Lighthizer and his team and others uh, to walk through the, the details of this. But enforcement has to be worked out. And again, I think part of that story is going to be um, deadlines, right? That's very important. And nothing is open-ended forever, so we'll wait and see. It's not my job to negotiate uh, here or elsewhere, for that matter. But just to put that on the table, how important it is to us. It has to be, end of the day, every time I talk to the president, it has to be in America's interest. It has to be in the interests of American workers and farmers and ranchers and small business people and our entire economy. Unfair trading practices have to come to an end. Reciprocity has to take over. Mm -hmm. These are difficult issues, but they can be solved and they must be solved to have a good trade deal. And Larry, are you and the president feeling a little less uh, lenient towards China given the rally we've seen in equity markets since Christmas Eve. Does that give you a bit more cover to push harder on those key tricky issues that you've just mentioned? Oh, I don't like that phrase, Wilfred. You're my buddy, but I don't like that phrase, less lenient. I don't know what that means. These are crucially important issues uh, for our economy, I presume for the Chinese economy also. Listen, let me say this. These are pro-growth issues. You know, one thing I want to kind of get in here uh, two years at the two-year mark of the Trump administration, our economy is growing at a 3% plus rate. We just had new news, uh, industrial production, business equipment spending and so forth last Friday. Retail sales strong, holiday spending strong. We can go through as much of that as you want. But my point is this. We argued that lower tax rates, we argued that rolling back onerous uh, regulations, we argued that opening up the energy sector, we argued a number of these reforms are pro-growth and would generate much faster economic activity than we've seen in, I don't know how many years, maybe a couple of decades, to be honest with you. Uh, excluding the first quarter of 2017, which was President Obama's last quarter, we're basically growing at 3% plus at an annual rate for seven quarters. And I'm proud of that achievement. And along the way, We've had record increases in blue-collar employment. And blue-collar, by the way, their wages are rising faster than the white collars. Not higher, but faster. I think that's very important. The unemployment rate is way down. All the different demographic groups are showing the lowest unemployment in many years. We are proud of that. And in my judgment, although we will have a glitch with respect to the uh, temporary shutdown, the economy yeah. is very strong. The private sector is very strong, and I know there's a lot of pessimism out there. I do not share that pessimism. Larry, let's talk about the shutdown for a minute, the partial shutdown. We're really in uncharted territory here with this going on for a month now. Steve Leisman last week reported that the administration had doubled its estimate of the economic impact, uh, looking at contractors and sort of the ripple effects. How are you thinking about that as this continues on in record territory right now? Could that economic impact get worse? Well, look, what all I'll say is this. It's a shutdown issue. It's a temporary issue, okay? And yeah. whatever we may lose, whatever we may lose in the first quarter, by the way, the first quarter is always a problem because of bad seasons. But putting that aside, I acknowledge, I acknowledge, that we will lose some in the accounting of gross domestic product, okay? I do not acknowledge that the fundamental economy will be adversely affected at all. This is temporary stuff. 
And when the shutdown comes to an end and the negotiations are satisfactorily completed uh, for the administration and others, uh, we will get it all back. My own view, some may disagree, but I'm strong on this, we will see a snapback right away. Uh, we've been through this before. I acknowledge it's longer than it's been sometimes in the past. I lived through a bunch of these during the Reagan years, also happened in the 90s. There'll be an, virtually an immediate snapback. That is my judgment, Morgan. Uh, Larry, uh, w whatever the cause of the change in tone was, is the president pleased to see the Fed softening up its uh, stance uh, and its rhetoric towards rate hikes in the year ahead? Well, um, I think there's a coming together here where the latest Fed statements regarding patience, I like that word, patience. I don't want to have to define it too closely. The Fed is an independent agency. We're not trying to break any walls down. The president has had his point of view. A lot of people, myself included, think the president's point of view was absolutely correct. What you've got here, again, from low tax rates and a big regulatory rollback, you've got a supply side growth going on in the economy. We are producing more goods and services, factories and manufacturing and so forth. That is not inflationary. More people working is not inflationary. Producing more business investment and increasing our nation's capital stock at probably the best rates in 20 years couldn't possibly be inflationary. So therefore, the president's point of view that there is no inflation, what we have is very strong growth, I think is correct. That's just my personal opinion. Now, again, the Fed is independent. I understand that. Nobody's breaking the walls down. That's never been the purpose. But it sounds to me like the Federal Reserve has come around more closely to that view. And I want to commend in particular mm -hmm. not only Fed Chairman Jay Powell, but also Fed Vice Chairman Richard Clarida. Mr. Clarida has given some illuminating speeches on this subject. More people working, more factories being built, better trade deals to protect Americans, such as the U.S. Uh, MCA. That is not inflationary. And actually, the data points show the inflation rate, if anything, is, uh, is uh, coming down lower in the last, what, four, six, seven quarters. So the Fed is the Fed. We'll see where they go. I like the word patience. Larry, great to see you. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Larry Kudlow joining us there. We should mention the market did bounce uh, off the uh, comment from Larry that there had been no cancellation of trade talks with China, making the point that there was never a physical meeting scheduled for this week uh, that was uh, ever existed to be cancelled. Uh, the Dow uh, down 386 points at the moment. We had a jump, a little bit pullbacks, but the difference also down 1.5%, certainly off the session lows.